Hello, Kelly Webb again, and we are going to continue our review of the Hogan Personality Survey. Um, we just finished the review of the HPI, Hogan Personality Inventory. We're about to move on to the second portion, the Hogan Development Survey. So you should have your um, second set of results, and on the front it will say Hogan Development Survey. And as we reviewed in the HPI, there was neither good nor bad on the HPI scale, that was the yellow scale. Um, it just showed you different personality traits and how they might interact with each other when you're working and communicating within a team um, and how those skills might be able to help you do that better as a team. Um, next we're moving into this Hogan Development Survey and this scale is very different. Um, and, and I really think this is what makes the Hogan so different from other personality surveys um, is that it gives areas for potential improvement. Um, the scale that we're going to review has 11 different patterns of interpersonal behavior um, that can appear when people are very stressed, they might be tired, distracted, um, and so they, these, these traits could show up and be potentially an Achilles heel for you as a leader, um, could be a uh, career limiting um, behavior for you. So it's definitely something that we want to take a look at. Cinecore uses um, the Hogan Development Survey as part of our leadership development program when we're working with our mentees. Um, this is a part of what we look at and help them to try and learn and develop. Um, as well as we use this in team building exercises, um, at our managers conferences, as well as team building within our different locations and management teams. So on your, um, your assessment results, go ahead and turn to page two. You'll see there is a definition of each of the skills that we're about to review. But we're actually going to go ahead and go to page three and start looking at the scale itself. So this scale is set up differently. If you remember the HPI, the yellow scale, there was no good or bad. It's just how the traits interacted. There was low, high, and average. Um, here, there is good and bad. And so it's, it's categorized as no risk all the way up to high risk. And you can see from my results, I'm at high risk for um, excitability as well as very high risk for diligent. Um, I'm at low to no risk for bold and dutiful. So that's the way you read the scale from left to right. The smaller or shorter the bar, the less risk that trait is for you. So my top risk is diligent, followed by excitability, and then colorful. And then the rest are all no to low to moderate risk. So the thing to look at when you are reviewing your scale is to look at those traits that are at high risk first and really try to get an understanding of those, those traits for you and how those traits might exhibit themselves when you think about it. So for me, excitability, um, it could show up, it could show up when I'm under high amounts of stress. Um, I could come across as easily irritated. Um, I could come across as um, um, being overexcited about something. Um, and I have very physical cues when I get into that high excitability. Um, my heart starts racing, I start talking a little louder, a little faster. Um, I might even wag my finger, I've been known to do that. Um, but this is something that I've been working on since, since I was in my 20s actually, but really focused on the last three or four years since we did the Hogan, um, of trying to recognize those physical cues for myself. And as soon as I start feeling that way, my heart start racing, I start talking slower, I start talking softer, and that gets me out of that fight or flight response that I've gotten myself into. And so those are things for me, it was a very physical response, and I was able to learn how to recognize that and then take steps to adjust myself and try and keep myself from getting to that stage. Sometimes it works and I get myself out of it, sometimes it does not. Um, and then I've also had mentees that their cues are very different. They have a mental dialogue that might be going on in their head. For example, high skeptical. 
High skeptical is to a point where you may mistrust other people's intentions. Um, you may feel like challenging or blaming others when things occur. Um, but really just, just not trusting other people and their intentions when you're in high stress. And I had a mentee that he had a very strong dialogue that went on internally um, when he got into stress and he had these interactions. He would, he would uh, be having a conversation with a person in his head. He'd go, uh-huh, sure. He would have this little mental dialogue going on behind the conversation going, oh, I don't believe this. Uh, yeah, right. Um, and so he had to learn how to recognize that internal dialogue that was going on and be able to mentally back off of that and really try and listen and understand and not have that, that level of doubt that he was having about the conversation. So as you go through the scale and you go through the definitions on these scales, um, just look at what you think are your most critical traits that, that could be um, your, not downfall, but your um, limiting trait as a leader. For me, it's definitely my excitability. Um, the other thing to look at as well is your, your traits and how they might interact with each other. For diligent, my high diligent, that's also one that if I don't keep in check could be a career limiting move as well. Um, diligent is about having very, very high standards. Um, and again, this is when under stress, becoming so meticulous and becoming a perfectionist that nothing's good enough. And you can imagine with a high diligent and a high excitability, it turns into everything needs to be perfect and oh, by the way, it needs to be done yesterday. Now, I wouldn't have very many team members that would stick around if that's how I interacted with them under stress because that's not realistic at all. And so thinking about how these traits interact together as well is going to be important as you move forward and are working on some of these yourself. So what I recommend to the mentees that I work with um, is picking one or two traits that you feel you want to work on, typically the ones that are on the higher end of the scale, um, and then think about over the next two weeks, really think about when you get under stress um, and how those traits show up for you. Do you have mental cues? Is there a mental dialogue that's going on? Do you have physical cues? Learn how to recognize the cues first. Start with the cues. And so we go through that period first of recognizing the cues. Then we go through, okay, now I know what my cues are. What are some of the things that I can do now that I know my cues to get myself out of that situation? Whether it's fight or flight or um, whether it's a leisurely, the passive aggressive, you know, how do you get yourself out of that situation? How do you back away from that behavior? Um, and that's going to be where you start to see the real professional development because you're able to overcome it. So if you have any questions as you're reviewing um, the scale, the first thing to do is to scroll through the next few pages and it will actually tell you based on what you scored, how you might tend to react. So for me, with that high excitability, um, critical and easily irritated, prone to emotional outburst, becomes ups easily upset with people or projects. Um, and so you can really think about how those traits are exhibited for you. It may not be all of these. Um, for me, uh, giving up and not following through on commitments, that's not one that I see more so than the critical and easily irritated. That's, that's the one I see more. So it, it, won't, it may not match exactly with what, what the traits are for you. It's going to be different for each person how it's exhibited. And it may be something that shows up that's not even uh, a descriptor that they have. So just really think through uh, for yourself how that comes out. And then just go through each of those. And then if you have any questions, certainly feel, for, feel free to call me. But we will be using this at the Manager's Conference um, for some team building. So we look forward to that in the next few weeks. Thank you.